Hey guys, welcome back. So now we're going to be talking about the second derivative test. And we're going to be treating the second derivative test very similar to how we treated the first derivative test. But there are going to be two differences. The first one is going to be that we're going to be taking the second derivative of the function. So we're going to be taking a whole extra derivative this time. And the second difference is that we're not going to be talking about increasing or decreasing or relative extremas. We're going to be talking about concavity. And if you guys don't know what concavity is, no worries, we're about to break it down. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we have that the second derivative tells us when f of x is blank and blank. And the whole point of the second derivative, once again, is to talk about concavity. But concavity can be broken down into two types of concavities, right? Concave up and concave down. So let's go ahead and write that in here. We're going to have concave up and then concave down, right? So concave up is going to look like this, and concave down is going to look like this, right? Like an open thing like this is concave up, and then like this is concave down. And the idea is that we can relate concave up to being happy. When you're up, you're happy, and then when you're down, you're sad. So let's go ahead and do this actually in red. So the blue is a concavity, like this, or like this if it's down. And the red just kind of adds up to the whole happy face, sad face relation that we're going to be making, right? So concave up is going to be saying that we're happy. Concave down, we're going to be saying that we're sad. So now let's go ahead and look at our graph here that we have on the right and talk about this graph's concavity, right? So if we start off with the first part of the graph, which we can say it's right here, right? That kind of makes a sad face, right? If we add the little two dots up here, that's going to look like a sad face. So we're going to say that that part of the graph, that part of f of x, is concave down. Now, this part right here is going to be considered concave up because it's going to look like a happy face, right? But I kind of just skipped from the left side of the graph to just like this middle part where we talk about it going from concave down to concave up. So somewhere in between, somewhere in between these two points in my graph, the concavity changed. It went from down to up, right? So suddenly something happened that you were sad, and then you suddenly got happy. But how, how are we going to call that point where our concavity changes or our mood changes if we want to relate to being happy and sad, right? So we're going to say, we're just going to take a giant guess and say that somewhere around here, somewhere around here, maybe a little higher, like here perhaps, our concavity changed, which means that we were sad and then we just got happy. And we're going to call that point P. And we're going to call it a point P because that point is going to be called a point of inflection. Point of inflection, right? And your point of inflection is going to be when you change from your concavity from sad to happy or from down to up. And how do we find these points of inflection? Where do we get these points of inflection, right? This is the relevant to the critical numbers, right? So we can think about our points of inflections of our second derivative test like the critical numbers of our first derivative test. So you guys see that we're treating this very similarly. And the points of inflection come from the blank of the second derivative, right? And they're going to come from the zeros of the second derivative. And what that means is that I need to find the second derivative and then I need to set it equal to zero. So I'm going to get my function, I'm going to derive it once, I get my first derivative, I'm going to derive it again, so I get my second derivative, and then I'm going to set that equal to zero. And those x values that I get, those are going to be my possible points of inflection. And possible points of inflection, let me emphasize on that, possible because not every zero of your second derivative, not every x value that you get when you set the second derivative equal to zero is a point of inflection, right? Because there isn't always a change in concavity. All right? So let's go ahead and go to the next bullet where it says that they occur, and by day I mean the points of inflection occur when f double prime, or the second derivative, changes concavity. Right? Because this whole thing is about concavity. Or not just concavity, but signs. And when I talk about signs, that sounds a lot like we're going to be needing a number line, right? Because you guys remember in the first derivative test, we talked about the sign of the derivative being meaning something about our function, right? 
and that is not going to change here for a second derivative test, the same thing is going to happen. f of x is concave up when f double prime is, well, we're talking about the signs here, so it can be whether positive or negative, right? But we're going to be talking about concave up, right? Concave up, you're happy when it's concave up when it, the second derivative is positive, right? So makes a nice relation that concave up, being up with being positive, with being happy, right? They're all kind of like positive words, right? And now when you're concave down, let's say you're feeling down, it means that you're sad or your second derivative is going to be negative, right? So we can relate all those things together when talking about the second derivative, right? So this all means nothing to me if I don't actually do an example about it because I'm just kind of talking about these rules and I feel like I'm doing way too much too much uh, topics here, too much talking, and no, no, too little example, right? So let's go ahead and jump straight into an example. Here in example one, where I give you f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 8x plus 9. And we're here we're talking about a quadratic function or the common name, a parabola, right? And parabolas are actually going to be probably the best example of concavity or polynomials for that case because they're very smooth, they're very nice smooth curves in which they have a lot of you know, turning points. So, let's go ahead and look at it, letter A, where it tells us to find the intervals when f of x is concave up or concave down. Well, that's going to be related strictly with these two points right here, where I tell you that concavity is concavity is up, con it's concave up whenever the der second derivative is positive, and it's concave down whenever the second derivative is negative. So, in order to tell you where this function is concave up or concave down, I'm going to go ahead and first find the second derivative. First find the second derivative. Okay, which is going to be, I mean, well, I can't find the second derivative right away. I need to find first the first derivative and then take a second derivative, right? So the first derivative is going to be 4x minus 8. And now to find my second derivative, I need to go ahead and take another derivative. So I just do the same thing again which I'm going to just get 4, right? So like I said, now we're here. We need to find the zeros of the second derivative, right? So I need to set that my second derivative, I need to set my second derivative equal to 0 or set 4 equal to 0. But here's an issue. 4 is never going to be 0, right? 4 is never going to be 0 because that means that 4 is going to equal to 0 and that's never going to happen. There is no x value that I can input to make this happen. So whenever we have a constant equal to a number, we automatically just cross that out. We cross that out. So in this case, we have we have no actual x value that we can say that the function is concave up or concave down between it, right? So that means that our function is going to be whether concave up the whole time or concave down. Since we have no zeros, we have no turning points, or we can call these points of inflection, right? So the fact that the fact that we got no zeros here, that leads us to tell that the function f of x has no possible points of inflections, right? So my concavity is going to be the same always, right? But I'm still going to go ahead and do a number line. I'm still going to go ahead and do a number line. And there's no number to put there, right? There is no number to put there because there is no zero that I would normally put here, right? So in this case, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to label my number line f double prime because we're talking about the second derivative. And then I'm going to ask you, what is, a, what is the second derivative? Is it always negative or is it always positive? And then we look here, we have a 4, which is a positive number. So our second derivative is just always positive, right? It's always positive. Therefore, there's only one type of concavity. There's only one type of concavity, and that is going to be a conca concave up. So we're going to say concave up, and that's going to be always, so it's going to be from negative infinity to negative to positive infinity, right? And then we can't talk about concave down because it just never happens. So we can even do like concave down, never, or something like that, right? We can go ahead and do that. So. And then the part B where I ask you find that point of inflection, I can't even give you a point of inflection because I never actually found a zero, right? I never actually found a zero. All I can tell you is, all I can tell you is that my 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 function always always concave up. So, 
Let's see, kind of put this into a graphical representation for a second so we can connect what we just did, the calculus that we did, with the actual graphical representation of it. So here we have a leading term of 2x squared, right? 2x squared. That looks like a parabola to me and a positive parabola, right? No matter when this parabola opens, I'm just going to draw. go ahead and draw it, right? I'm going to say this parabola just looks like it's here. Boom. This may not be right. It's okay. I just want to talk about what my function is telling me, right? I'm just talking about a leading term of 2x squared. It's a parabola that has some kind of vertex somewhere, but it is opening up, right? It is opening up, right? So before, we would just say that the parabola opens up. But now we can see that the parabola is concave up. You guys see that we're taking an old topic that we used to talk about, just opening up or opening down, with mean concave up or concave down. And what we're saying is that our parabola is always concave up. And we can see that, right? This, con this, this parabola is always happy. It always has a happy face. So we're good to go. Because this parabola never has anything like a sad face anywhere. So it's always concave up, right? So that's the idea of concavity. And that is the graphical representation of not having any inflection points. There is no change in concavity here. I'm never going to actually go from a positive concavity to a negative concavity. So now let's go see another example where things may be just a little different. Okay? So I'm going to give you another function. In this case, I'm giving you guys a cubic function, an x to the 3. And I'm going to tell you to find the intervals where f of x is concave up and down. So we're going to start it off the same way. We're going to start it off the same way. And that is going to be by, by simply just finding first the first derivative. Because in order to find concave up and concave down, I know we need to find the second derivative instead of equal to 0. But we're going to go ahead and just find the first derivative first and then take an extra derivative. So here we have that f prime is equal to 3x squared minus 12x. So then that's the first derivative. Now we go ahead and take the second derivative, and that is going to be 12, I mean, 6, 6x minus 12. Okay, we got something now. And now, what we're going to do is we're going to set the second derivative equal to 0. So I'm going to have 6x minus 12 equal to 0. If I solve for x, which I can now, compared to the last problem, example, I'm going to get x equal to 2. So now, I have found a nice point that I can put on my number line. And I'm actually going to make my number line, let's keep it at blue. Okay, and this is my number line of the second derivative, which reminds me that if I'm going to plug the numbers, they need to be into the second derivative. So my point there, my possible point of inflection is 2, right? I have not told you if it's a point of inflection yet because we haven't discussed its concavity. But I just want to tell you the intervals where it's concave up or concave down. And here, I'm going to pick numbers below 2 and above 2, right? So once I, I set my second derivative equal to 0, I pick numbers below and after to test what is happening here, right? What is happening here below 2? What is happening here after 2? It doesn't have to change. It doesn't have to go from plus to negative or from minus to plus. But 2 is a possible changing point for us, right? So let's go ahead and pick some points, right? So I'm going to go with easy numbers. Like, for example, for me, it's going to be very easy, a number less than 2, to pick 0. I try to use 0 as much as possible because it's just simple to work with. And then a number bigger than 2, I'm going to go not too far. I'm just going to pick 3. And then if I plug in 0 into my second derivative, which is in here, right? If it's in here, I'm going to get a negative number, right? So I'm going to get that negative 12. I don't care about the number that I'm getting. I don't care that I'm getting negative 12. I just care about the, neg the, va the sign of the number, which in this case is going to be negative. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and I plug in 3 into my second derivative. I'm going to get, I don't care about the number. I just care about the actual sign. And that's going to be positive. So since in part A, all we care about is the concavity when it's concave up or concave down. Let's go ahead and talk about that, right? So... Below 2, we can say it's concave down, and above 2, we can say it's concave up because of the sign of the second derivative. So we're going to go ahead and put that right here. Concave, let's start with concave up. That's the first part of the question. And then concave down, right? So for concave up, I said it was anything greater than 2. So I'm going to go with an interval from 2 
to infinity. And then for anything concave down, it's going to be anything less than 2. So it's going to be negative infinity to 2, right? So we kind of have our number line, and we just go ahead and read the interval, right? Anything below 2 is concave down. Anything above 2 is concave up. So this is kind of like what we wanted. This is the whole part for part A that we wanted to. And now in part B, which I need all of part A to answer part B, I'm going to ask you find the points of inflection, right? So before this, we had just discussed that x equal to 2 was a possible point of inflection. We hadn't confirmed if it was a point of inflection or not. But the way we're going to confirm it is only if there's a change in concavity or a change in signs, right? So below 2, the, derivative, the second derivative is negative. Above 2, the second derivative is positive, right? So that seems to me like a change. I'm going from negative to positive, right? Therefore, I have a point of inflection. Right? So that means that x equal to 2 is a point of inflection. Okay? And just to give you guys a quick graphical representation of what this means, I'm going to say that at x equal to 2, I don't know much, right? Because concavity can be increasing or decreasing, and we'll get more into that stuff when we talk about curve sketching. But here, we just have that the, the, the concavity is negative, right? So I'm just going to have like a sad face, which is going to look to me like something like this, right? Like a sad face. And then up after 2, I'm just going to pick a random point, And it's going to be like something like this. So I'm going to say that here, I'm going to go happy. And let's make my, my sad face a little more exaggerated. Uh, let's do this in green. So you see how I have a sad face, it's really exaggerated, and how here I have a happy face and it's really exaggerated. So you guys can see there that I'm changing from a concave down, concave down to a concave up, and that's going to be all at two. Therefore, two is my point of inflection, right? It's my point where my concavity changes. Now, this doesn't have to be the exact idea of what's happening in this function, but I just want to give, give you guys an example of what is happening when you actually have a change in concavity versus how up here when we don't have a change in concavity. It's just always happy or always sad. But here we go from sad to happy or from happy to sad. All right? So now let's go ahead and try some practice problems in which we get to see how different functions change in concavity or don't change in concavity. And we analyze their point of inflection. Let's go.